My dear Lily and Hattie, oh dear sisters, are you safe? That terrible earthquake. All Santa Rosa is gone. Our house and Ma's are all right. Our chimneys are down, but the store is burnt to the ground. We are so worried about you, so let us know if you are safe. Charles and Pa are downtown since early this morning. Fires are raging and lots of people killed in burning buildings. In taking them out, Mrs. Moak and Child were killed. We are worried about Frank and Clarence and the wires are all down. We tried to telegraph. Hope this will reach you. Your sister, Jessie. Santa Rosa was the big town in Sonoma County because uh, it was not only the county seat, but it became the railroad center. So this was the shopping center then and the banking center. It was definitely rural, uh, by even in 1900. Uh, one in six people lived in Santa Rosa, so while it was the big town, it was, it was a distinctly rural county. Uh, more, there were many, many more farmers than there were townspeople. Uh, the first courthouse was built in the plaza in 1883, the one that was out in the middle of what we now call Old Courthouse Square. And that's the one that came down dramatically in the earthquake. As the downtown had grown, it had grown, I would say, north-south from the courthouse. And when uh, the railroad came, it did kind of shift around and go down toward the railroad depot. But it was all you know, the streets were narrow, the stores were right on the streets, these hotels that went right straight up. The city had decreed that because they were afraid of fire, public buildings would be brick. It was a very prosperous town, as California towns went at that time. It had achieved some, some political status with the newspaper and the people who'd gone on to public office and to the Supreme Court. Tom Geary, who was a congressman from Santa Rosa, was actually one of the nominees for vice president of the United States in 1902. It was remarkable, you know, that you'd have a 2,000-seat theater in Santa Rosa in the 1890s. And uh, it was uh, built upstairs over the post. There was, a, a, I think, a stationery store and the post office were downstairs. The Athenaeum uh, was on the vaudeville circuit. And uh, in fact, many of the people that, were, that died in the, in the earthquake were people who were here staying in those downtown hotels that were actresses and actors who had come to town to play the uh, Athenaeum. The interurban trolleys that carried passengers they went right by farms. You could go down to the end of your lane if you lived in a farm, and you could put your milk up on the stand, and the train would pick it up and take it to Petaluma to the creamery. Or you could get on the train and go into downtown Santa Rosa, ride it right up to the courthouse, stop, get off, do your shopping, get back on the trolley, and go home. Company C of the National Guard came in to, to bolster Company E, which was our National Guard company. It, there was martial law to keep people from looting, and they sent uh, sailors from the Naval Yard at Mare Island. Sailors came up to, uh, to help with cleaning up, to pick up rubble. They brought the railroad cars in, particularly the PNSR cars, and loaded bricks and things onto hall to clear out the downtown, because it was mostly the downtown that was damaged. The wood frame buildings pretty much survived. Maybe cracked and twisted a bit, but uh, they survived. Although a lot of people did move out of their houses and live in tents or live on the lawn or live in, in the farm areas, lived in sheds in rural areas because they, they were all aftershocks and they were afraid to be in the house. But a lot of people helped, of course. Terrell Bruner used to told, told me the story about he was 12 or 14 years old, and his father sent him to Sebastopol on the train to get gloves, to buy all the gloves that they could find because uh, to clean up, you know. And he came back with as many gloves as there was in Sebastopol, and they passed him around to the workmen. Of course, there was a fire, you know, besides the earthquake. There was a fire that, that started. The, they had to pull the, the, the fire, the firehouse had collapsed and killed the horses. And they had to pull the carts with men. And it burned up 4th Street. It started below the courthouse and burned up to the courthouse. Everybody 
kicked in what they could. And people obviously did help each other. And some people simply left town and said, not for me, and, and uh, packed up and let the population decreased in the first year after the earthquake. We had more people die per capita. You know, if, if the same ratio had died in San Francisco, there would have been 7,500 people dead. So people moved in with each other if they, the people who died were mostly, mostly people who were from out of town. They were salesmen, they were the vaudeville people, they were, you know, drummers as they called them then, people who, traveling salesmen, who were in the hotels. There were a few who lived downtown. The Bruners lived downtown, but they managed to get out. They lived over their store. But uh, the people who lived in houses survived. One business left that was here pre earthquake, and that would be Pedersen's Furniture. That was, uh, and in those days, they were also the undertakers because er, early on, because the furniture people made the caskets, so that was part of their job. Burbank had just built a new house. It was okay, and he also his greenhouse was new. Not a window was broken. Two days before the earthquake, he'd had some photographs taken at his photo studio on 3rd Street, right across from the courthouse. His photo studio was just destroyed, and everything was done on glass plates in those days, and everything was lost except for the glass plates of Burbank, which survived. Well, City Hall went down, and they were meet the city council was meeting outside, but they took hold, and the relief report shows that the city stepped in and began to coordinate relief efforts. Supervisors meeting out on the lawn of the courthouse with the dome in the background, you know, and there's a, the, the woman who keeps the records right in front, you know, and we're going to meet. We're going to meet at the courthouse, whether there's a courthouse or not. A magazine, the Pacific Traveler, or some magazine like that, that referred to Santa Rosa in, in the, the following year as the pluckiest town on the Pacific coast. And I think that's probably what it was. They just kept going at it. And there was a, a flower seller put up a little shack with a tin, tin roof in front of the library and was selling flowers. And you know, it, that is plucky when people are buying bouquets of flowers in the middle of all this disaster.